I want you to open to the book of Ephesians chapter one. I'm just gonna uh, take hold of one verse here and um, then move along in a message that I just kind of titled, and I kind of just basing this off of my own life, so to speak. Because I really, I don't want to make you jealous, but I do. All right, I really do want to make you jealous because I really believe that God is not a respecter of persons. I don't know what you think about God, but I don't believe, I believe according to what the word says that he is not a respecter of persons and what he'll do for one, he will do for all. But God is a God who also requires something. He requires his people to participate and to cooperate and to get involved with his word and his ways. And as I look around the congregation over the years that I've been pastoring and, you know, uh, you know, I don't know how many people, I, in fact, I'm sometimes shocked to see how many people, you know, are half stepping it with God. Can I, can I say it that way? Half stepping. They're not doing full steps, but they're half stepping. So they're not doing everything that they know they should be doing as far as what the word requires or the word uh, leads out or, or tells us. And, and ultimately, we wonder sometimes why we don't end up blessed. Now, all of these promises, all of these principles, all of these provisions that have been laid out by God are for you, for the taking. But you have to take them. See, God wants you, listen to me, are you all listening to me? God wants you to live the blessed life. He wants you and I to walk and move and live in the bless, blessings that he has appropriated for us. Amen. But we have to do something about it. Yes. Is everybody with me? Yes. They're not just going to fall on you. You have to activate this with your faith. And one of the ways you're going to activate in your faith is by just trusting God and doing the word. We'll talk about some of these things. So I want to enumerate some of the things that I have done in my life that have brought me to this place. So sometimes people look and they say, you know, I've had pastors come to me. I've had people, can you just tell me, like, how did you get here? How did you do, to be honest with you, I don't know. All I know is I've been doing the word of God as best that I know how to do it all of these years in my life. And I just have progressively moved into this blessed life that I enjoy today. So I'm not trying to brag on myself by any means. I'm bragging on God because... I know more than anybody knows that I could not have done this apart from the hand of God moving in my behalf because I know that I'm not smart enough. I'm not charismatic enough. I'm not whatever it takes enough. I know that. I know that I know that I know that this is God's doing in my life because I have just plain old trusted his word trusted his ways and a purpose to put this into operation in my life. So there is a blessed life and you and I can walk in this blessed life. I do. And I want you to walk in the same level of blessing that I am walking. So I have purposed in my life to put a few principles from the word of God into operation and into practice that I believe and I believe are the very reasons why I am where I am today. And they're very, very simple. And maybe this will be redundant for some. And you say, well, I've heard that. Well, I pray that you will never get into a place where you think you've heard something. That you don't need to hear it again. You know, a great pre my father in the faith, Fred Price, you know, said something like this. I'm just going to put my twist on it. You know, you, you, you can't just eat meat once. You can't eat meat and say, well, I, I've had, I know what I've had. You have to eat it all the time in order to get the sustaining nutrients that meat brings. So, so a lot of these things that you hear may be things that you already have heard, but we need to be reminded of them and be encouraged in them so that we can see the results that we are looking for. All right. So some of these things, um, and, and I'll put emphasis on the ones that I think are more important or more, have been more valuable in my life. But let me just, let me go through a couple of these things. I'm going to jump around a little bit, but let's start in Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 says here, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, I want you to pay attention, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. 
So who's, it doesn't say who's going to bless you, who has blessed you. We are already a blessed people. But we need to do our part to unlock those blessings that God has already bestowed upon us and made available to us. Can I get a better amen than that? Amen. Who has blessed us, notice, with every, not a few, but with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So God has inc included in this blessing package everything and anything you could ever need, want, or desire in your life. Walking in the blessings of God means that my life is fully touched in every area, that there are no needs, lacks, wants, or desires that are left unmet. Walking in the blessings of God means that God is supernaturally working in my behalf and bringing these blessings into my life as I walk in faith and put these principles into operation in my life. It's as simple as that. We are already blessed. I want you to say it. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Sometimes you just got to look in the mirror and say, I'm, you may feel not blessed, but you need to look in the mirror and say, I'm blessed. Amen. You need to convince yourself that you are already blessed. Amen. And maybe, you know, the reason why you're not walking in the fullness of those blessings is because some things need to maybe be fixed. That's right. Maybe something needs greater attention. Maybe you need to get back to some of the things that you've lost hold of or you have forgotten about in, in your walk with God. Can I get a better amen than that? Amen. All right. So, so let's just go through this. And these are not in any order of importance. These are just thoughts and ideas that I have put together as I looked over my own life and, you know, like, Lord, I'm, I mean, you know, I hear stuff all the time and I just, I, I, in my prayer time, I say, Lord, I just thank you that I'm blessed. Yeah. I, and sometimes I feel guilty that I'm so blessed. But I do. I feel like, you know, why, why me? Why have you? But you see, this is what God and God keeps speaking. This. I want to do this for everybody. Amen. But, you know, but, but there are people who are stubborn and hard hearted and, and, and are resistant to the principles of God's word. And, and they're not reaping the blessings to the level that God would have you to reap. See, you want to, listen, you want to get to the level where you're so blessed that others are eating from your blessing tree. Amen. When people are eating from your blessing tree and picking fruit from your blessing tree, you know that you know that you're blessed. Yes. Because it's not just about meeting my own needs, but it's about this blessing pouring out on other people as well. Come on, somebody give me a better, better amen than that. That's what God wants to do in our lives because he wants to bless people. And you and I ought to see ourselves as the potential blessings to other people. But you can't bless anybody until you are walking in the blessings. You have to walk in God's best before others can partake from the fruit that comes from your life and from your tree. And that's been my goal. I just want to be blessed so that I can be a blessing to others. In every area, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking, here, let's not be so carnal. We're talking about blessing in, in every dimension and every realm. So how are we going to how are we going to walk in this blessed life? So let's talk about a few things tonight. And we'll see how far we go. All right. So I want to go over. We'll, we'll look at, at a couple of verses, but I'm going to probably just spit out some others. But let's go over to Psalm chapter one. And again, like I said, these are not in any order of importance. They're just the way that they've come out and the way I wrote them down. But in Psalm one, listen to what it says. And, and uh, I love the way this, this says, blessed. What are we talking about tonight? We're talking about how to walk in the blessings, how to live the blessed life. Blessed. Well, if it says blessed, I, I ought to pay a lot more attention. If I want to live the blessed life, then I ought to pay more attention when the Bible starts to tell me blessed is the man. Yeah. That gets my attention. Does that get your attention? Yeah. Blessed is the man. God is about to tell me something about walking in this blessed life. That I want to know about because I want to walk in the best that God has. So he says, blessed is the man, now listen, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's a powerful statement there, because I'm going to tell you, you may be sitting here and some of you are going to say, amen, that's right, brother. 
But I'm going to tell you what, you're being more counseled by the world than you are by your pastor on Sunday or by the word of God. Because you're being bombarded with all kinds of corrupted wisdom from the world that will prove to do nothing for your life. Many of us are still operating in that corrupted wisdom of the world. We're not operating in the wisdom from above and the word of God and the precepts of God. We're responding like the world. We're reacting like the world. We're doing like the world instead of doing, responding, and reacting like the word of God teaches us to. He said, blessed is the man who refuses and rejects the counsel of the world. You want to walk in the blessings of God. You've got to reject the counsel of the world. You've got to reject the wisdom that the world tries to push on you and put on you. He said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners. In other words, you're not going to be, you're not going to be walking with sinners. Really, the, sub, the, the little title that goes over this little portion right here is, is basically this. Y you got you to gotta keep some good connections. Yes. Yes. Amen. If you want good vibrations in your life, you got to have some good connections. Because your connections will prove the kind of responses, you know, will prove your own life and what will come out of your own life because those who you are connected with will have an effect upon your life. Amen. He said, blessed is the man who rejects the world and the wisdom of the world and the ways of the world and doesn't stand, and that's my elaboration on that, nor stands in the path of sinners. Not going to hang out with sinners, talk like sinners, look like sinners, act like sinners. I'm not going to have any idols that are sinners. And this is something that we really got to check ourselves with because, you know, we have more idols in Hollywood and, and some of your kids are looking up to these, you know, rock stars who are a mess and on their way to hell. I'm not going to stand in the path of sinners. I want to stand in the house of God. I want to stand with believers. I want to stand with the godly. I want godly influence. Am I speaking to anybody here? Yeah. We're talking about walking the blessed life. Well, then we got to get around some blessed people. Yeah. You're never going to walk the blessed life if all you hang around with cursed people. Yeah. Nor stands on the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Right. Arrogant. Yes. Bad attitude. Yeah. I'm not going to be hanging around with people that in a bad attitude, that's going to mess up my blessed life. Amen. So, now, now, listen. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Yes, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit. What does he bring forth? Fruit. fruit. Blessing. Blessing. He meditates in the word day and night. He meditates. In, in other words, he's partaking of the word of God. This is the entry level here when we talk about this part. Because number one, you've got to have good connections. Amen. You've got to have good connections. Amen. This would be a good time of the year, you know, beginning of a new year. Take, a, you know, an inventory of, of your friends and, and relationships. And, and, and really start to think, you know, is this a good relationship? I mean, I'm not telling you to hate people and disown them, but maybe pull back a little bit and change a little bit because if, if, if they're not godly and they're not living godly and they're not influencing you in godliness and righteousness and right things and good things and wholesome things, then, then they're actually having a negative effect in your life and it's going to ruin your blessed life. Your blessed life has all to do with the kind of people you hang around with. Yes. See, I've always purposed to hang with blessed people. Amen. People who love God. Amen. Come on, are you with me? Amen. Good connections. I want to hang out with people that are, you know, a little bit ahead of me. Yes. Yes. Because they, they pull me with them. Yes. 
I'm encouraged by what's going on in their lives. So if you're going to walk the blessed life, if you're going to live the blessed life, then you got to get around blessed people. You have to have good amen. connections. Can I have a better amen than that? All right. So, so let's, let's just, um, let me give you this, this verse and then we'll go back to, to Psalm 1 again. In Proverbs 13, 20, it says, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. You know that verse. I've preached that a bunch of times. It's amazing to me how many times I preach a verse and people still don't get it. Even in my own family. I hate to report that, but <laughs> the other day I was, we were dealing with something, you know, and I, I opened up the Bible and I said, here's a verse, it's right here. Let me give you the, now it's a verse that I've given a million. If, it, if, a, if I gave it once, I gave it a million times in this church. And my, my nephew, Stephen, and my niece, Karen, Nolan was there and I showed him a verse and wow, that's a great verse. <laughs> Like it was the first time he heard it. I said, knucklehead, I've been preaching this for 35 years. Great verse. I should, ought to write that down. You should have wrote it down 30 years ago when you heard it. What are you, what's taking you so long? So we got to give these verses, right? So those who walk with the wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Paul says about himself, and I love this verse, in Philippians 4, 9, he says, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the peace of God will. In other words, follow my example. Yes. Yes. Keep this connection. Amen. Let what's going on in my life stimulate and stir your life. If you do what I do, you're going to see the peace of God's going to come upon you. See, your connections have all to do with your level of blessing in your life. If you don't keep good connections, you're not going to walk in the best that God has for you. Come on, somebody. I've seen people go down the tubes because of corrupted relationships and bad relationships. Am I speaking to anybody in this nice little... I'm not calling out any denominations. I'll be, I'll be nice tonight. Amen? All right. So, so back to Psalm 1. So number one is that you have to keep good connections. Everybody say good connections. <laughs> very, very important. So number two, we find here again in Psalm 1, verse 2, it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night, or he mutters. He rehearses, he repeats. Amen. He thinks about it. There's this whole thing in the world today about meditation. Yeah. Everybody's meditating. <laughs> I wonder what they're meditating on. Meditating on the birds, on the sun? What are you meditating on? I, I, you know, I, some of the young, young guys in the, in the gym that I go to, one young kid in front, he's like, he's in, he, now he's going to teach people how to meditate. I said, what are you going to meditate on? <laughs> what, what are you meditating? Well, you know, just connect with the energy. Energy? <laughs> what energy? What are you talking about? I had that conversation when I was in high school with one of my classmates because he was into, you know, he was a science guy and he says, you know, oh, well, matter, you know, you know, we were talking about God and he didn't believe in God and, and he went through this whole thing and he comes down and he says, well, everything just started and began with matter. And I said, yeah, well, where did matter come from? And he said to me, from energy. I said, oh, it came from energy. Well, you call it energy, I call it God. Yeah. You've, you, you've reduced God to energy, but I'm telling you that God is God. And I, well, what I said to him about that, I said, well, where did energy come from? I forgot that part. So where did energy come from? He said, energy always was and always will be. I said, there you found God, my brother. You call it energy, I call it. That's what he told me. I said, well, you call it energy, I call it God. I call him God. Anyway. So in his law, he meditates. What are you meditating on? If you're meditating on the word of God, then your life is going to be blessed. But if you're meditating on your problems, your worries, your fears, your unforgivenesses, your hurts and disappointments, then your life is not going to be blessed. So, I, so I've got to learn to delight, my, delight and meditate, delight myself and meditate in the word of God and not meditate on all the negative stuff that's, that's around 
See, even sometimes watching the news, you can get really ticked off. I, I do. I mean, I'm not trying to preach politics here. I don't know what side of the fence you're on, but the side I'm on, I'm ticked. I sometimes have to turn it off. And say, enough is enough now. i got to get back to meditating in the Word of God. Come on, somebody give me a better amen than that. Amen. So, in His law, or in the Word, in the book, this is the book. This is the law right here. This is the book. He meditates, not once in a while. You can't be a once in a while Christian. you got to meditate in the book every day. As often as possible. You got to get a verse, like memorize a verse a day or a week or a month. Do something. He says he meditates in the word of God and in his law, he meditates day and night. And notice what it says for a person who does this, who doesn't walk with the ungodly, who doesn't live by and receive and move, you know, and, and work his life in the, and run his life by the ungodly counsel of the world. But he meditates in the word. Listen to what it says. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. Brings forth fruit whose leaf also shall not wither. And I love this. I, are you, you got your seat belts on? Because this ought to blow your mind. He says, and whatever. I see, I, you, you just jump over words. I don't. And whatever. I like the Whatever. You see, you like the prosper. I like the whatever because I don't want to just prosper hit or miss or here and there. I want to prosper in everything that I do. Amen. How about you? Amen. How about you? Amen. This side said amen. This side didn't say amen. amen. How about you? Amen. He says, and whatever he does shall prosper. Amen. Why? Because he's not moving yes. and living yes. and working his life according to the counsel of the ungodly and the corrupted wisdom of the world. But rather, he's living his life and building his life and the actions of his life according to the word of God. This is something that I have done all my life. I've wanted sometimes to respond in a worldly way. I've wanted to get even. Don't look at me like that. You, you did too. Some of you are still dealing with it. I've wanted to lash out. I've wanted to, you know, because that just comes from the natural man. We want to do those things, in, you know, that are worldly. But, but the spirit man has been renewed by the word of God. And we know better. We ought to know better. And we ought to respond according to the word of God. Can, can I get a better amen than that? You see, that's what brings blessings into your life. Remember the subject, we're talking about how to live the blessed life. This is, this, is, this is where it is, you see. This is the truth of it. So I've got, to, I've got to delight and meditate in the word of God according to Psalm 1 if I'm going to really live and begin to move in this blessed life that God has. And then everything, no matter what you touch, it's going to prosper. Amen. It's going to prosper. It's going to prosper. You know, everything I do seems to prosper. And, and I'm excited about that. And, and sometimes I have to like, God, I don't, Lord, whatever. But I realize that this is the hand of God because I've purposed to the best of my ability to live God's way and not my way. To be a God man and not a worldly man. I have nothing to boast of. This is what my original pastor used to say. I have nothing to boast of, much to be ashamed of, and a whole lot to be thankful for. Amen. And that's really the way we ought, you see. Because that's one of the principles that I didn't get to and I won't have the scriptures. But if you're going to live the blessed life, you're going to have to learn to walk in humility. Amen. In humble attitude. No matter what God does in your life, you have to walk humbly. You can't be braggadocious. You can't try to, you know, make yourself look like something. People that try to make themselves look like something have a terrible insecurity problem because they feel like nothing on the inside. And that's where you need God to touch you 
and that your whole source of life and being has to be in God and you're just so lost in God that it, you're so filled, you're so lost in God and filled with his presence that you don't even matter. I want to impress anybody. If anything, I want people to know and see God in me. I want them to see what God is doing. So if you're going to live a blessed life, then you're going to, that's another, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's all right. You need, you need to walk and learn to walk in humility. Remember, pride goes before the fall and a haughty spirit before destruction, according to the word of God. So one of the things that I've had to really, you know, work in my life, because sometimes I, you know, I'm as human as you, you know, you want to, I've had to just humble myself. I'd rather humble myself than, let, than have God humble me. And you see, sometimes my brother-in-law says, I've got to give him credit. There's some people that are very humble and they're so proud of their humility. Yeah. <laughs> very well said. Give credit where credit is due. If I don't, he'll remind me after service. <laughs> as humble as he is. <laughs> but you have to walk in humility because a humble spirit just draws. I believe that. When people see true humility, they're going to be drawn to you. Amen. Favor is going to be open to you. Respect is going to, you can't demand respect. Respect comes to you. I can't respect me. I'm the pastor. No. I'm, you want to respect me? You respect me. You don't. I'm not going to force you. You're going to follow me? You follow me. I don't, that's why I don't chase people. Got to walk in humility. Am I speaking to anybody? This is how you enter into the dimensions of the blessed life. All right, so let's get back. So you delight and meditate in the word. You know this one. You've got to speak and do God's word. I was um, recently, there was um, some things that a couple, about two years ago, I was, some things that I was believing God for and in the ministry and um, I can't really get into the details of it, but um, so I'm going to kind of talk around it. All right. So I'm not trying to hide anything, but I just can't talk about it at this point. But there were some things that I was believing God for, wanted to see in the ministry. And, and I was praying and, and I just I just said, it's going to be a matter of my confession. So every time I thought of that thing, I just confessed what I saw. I confessed what I wanted it to be. And um, I just confessed it. And then I just kind of forgot about it. I still, every once in a while, would confess it, confess it. You know, sometimes you go through a season yes. of confessing and then, you know, that's it. It's done. Yes. Then you just, you just, you don't even think about it anymore because your faith has already grabbed hold of it. Yes. You know it's going to happen. So you don't have to confess it anymore because you already know in your spirit that it's, it's, it's going to happen, right? So you confess up to a point and then you stop. And I confessed, confessed, and I totally forgot about it. And then all of a sudden without me even being aware of it. I turned around and looked at some papers and some things and bam, exactly what I confessed finally came to pass. Finally came to pass. And I thought, whoa, God, I've been believing this for a long time and it finally came to pass. So I believe, you know, you don't have to get neurotic about this. Neuroses is not faith. That's not faith. Jesus, you know, when he cast out a demon, he cast it out with one word. And one word spoken in faith will do more than a thousand words. Or let me say the a thousand neurotic doubting words. But one word of faith, when you start to release the word out of your mouth, when you start to speak the word of God, over your circumstances, over your situations. It releases power. It releases something. Things begin to come into order. And that's what I've done in my life. When we were trying to buy this property, I think I told you the story. I mean, I think I did. I know I did. You've all heard it a thousand times, but you're going to hear it again because it was powerful the way it happened. We, we tried to buy the property and it was sold from under us. And I don't remember how this all goes in the order it went, but because it was like so much going on at that time. So forgive me if I'm out of the order of events, but all of these events did take place. Amen. They may not be in perfect order, but they all took place. 
So if I tell you one thing and it sounds like I said something different, it's, it, it's all, it all happened. It just, it just may not be the order that I remember. But we purchased, we were trying to buy the property and someone bought this property out from under us and I was devastated. I was driving back and forth on the Maranick Avenue because I had heard a, a pastor say that they were trying to get this property and that they had just drove by their property before they were able to buy it. And they spoke over the property and said, Amen. this property Amen. will be used for the purposes of their church and da, 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 da. And we bind it up a, uh, for any other use, but the use of this church and according to God's word, whatever you bind on earth will be bound. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose from heaven and using different verses. So I grabbed hold of that because we, we wanted this property. So I'm driving up and down. I did this you know, quite a while, just driving up and down Maranick Avenue, a few, maybe a week, two weeks or whatever in a row, three, and I would just roll out, open the window, roll out my hand. People, I don't know what they thought I was doing, but I roll up <laughs> down the window, stick my hand and say, this property shall be used for the purposes of God's kingdom and for the preaching of the gospel. Healings will take place. Deliverances, <laughs> salvations will take place. Well, wait a minute. Well, that was great, but then somebody bought the property from under us. <laughs> But you see, I had spoken the word of God over this thing. And six months later, as you, you know, heard the story, the property came up for sale again. And I kicked the real estate lady out of the office. I said, I don't, I had forgotten, you know, I, got, I was so wrapped up with all the emotion of it that I had forgotten the spiritual component of how powerful the words that I had spoken over this property were. And I finally said, okay, we're going to do this again. And we jumped in and it went through and we bought the property and we went ahead and built Amen. the building. And you know the story of all the warfare and everything we went through. And guess, guess what? What I was speaking over this property has come to pass. Amen. People are getting saved. People are getting delivered. People are getting healed. People are getting blessed. Miracles are taking place. The word of God is being preached. And that's what I was speaking. That's what I was speaking as I was driving past this property. And, and, and it's the same way in other areas of my life and other things. I've, I wanted to get to a new level. I started to confess that new level. I started to speak the word of God over it. Now, you can't just do that and be slothful, lazy, irresponsible, cheap. Is this sinking in? Yeah. That's not going to bring. No, you've got to do your part. You've got to do your part. But when you do your part in the natural and you couple it with the spiritual principle of speaking the word of God, speaking to your mountain, man, I'm going to tell you what. Things are going to happen. Things are going to happen. Norville Hayes, a great man of God. I think he passed away recently, I think. He, he was an awesome preacher, teacher of the word. And he made a very good statement years ago. He says, you, you don't replace good business principles with faith. Yes. Now that, whether you own a business or not, your household is your business. Amen. But if you own a business, your business is your business. You don't replace good business principles with faith. You use faith faith with good business. I'll never forget when he said that. He was a multimillionaire, by the way. He was a very successful businessman. And I, I'll never forget that. I wrote it down. It just locked into my brain because sometimes people think, well, I'm just moving in faith and they're slothful, lazy. They're, they're, they, they don't take care of their business. They don't know how to deal with people. They don't know how, they don't know how to do any of these things and they wonder why they're not, you know, it takes faith mingled with good business. And that's over your household as well. You can't just have, well, I'm believing for a million dollars, but you don't even know how to manage a hundred yet. How are you going to manage a million? You've got to use good business. Am I speaking to anybody here tonight? All right. So you've got to delight, meditate in God's word. You've got to speak the word and then put your faith on it. And you'll know when your faith is on it because you'll relax. You're like, it's done. I just know it's done. It's done. It's, it's on its way. And then whenever I think about it, 
you know, I just thank God. Thank you, Lord. I know it's coming. And, and this recent issue, this is what I, I just, every time I thought, thank you, Lord, I know it's coming. I don't know how. In the natural, it doesn't look like it's going to work. It doesn't look like we'll ever get there. Yep. But God, I'm just trusting you. And, <laughs> and I was like, blow me away. Like, I think I told the story years ago when I was trying to get out of debt and insufficiency and lack in my own life. And I would walk around with my savings account, which had nothing in it, and my checkbook that was in red. You know what I mean? You know red. It means there's no money. It means you owe. And I would walk around my little studio apartment that I lived in back when I, in those way beginning days. And I, would, I, was, like, I was like, Lord, I just thank you that my checkbook, my bills are paid, and there are thousands of dollars in my savings account. I thank you that my bills are paid and there are thousands of dollars in my savings account. And I just walked around and confessed that. I did that for a really long time. And then I worked. And I worked. Amen. And I got jobs. And I, 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 I did the best that I could do. And I wasn't slothful, lazy. And, and I, I managed my money. And God started to teach me principles. And all of a sudden, one day, I just realized... At that time, I was in a business with my brother and we had to close the business and we were having financial problems and we shut the whole thing down and just got rid of it and he went to another business and, and I was so nervous because I was just about to walk into ministry and I'm thinking, you know, the money that they offered me was so little and I thought, how is this ever going to work? But God, I trust you. I've confessed. My bills are paid, thousands of dollars in my, in my savings account and I walked into the first year of a full-time ministry with that church in Pleasantville, the Assemblies of God Church. And in that first year, I had paid off debt, all my bills were paid, and I had literally thousands of dollars in my savings account. And I did not know how it really happened. It just happened. God supernaturally brought things my way. In that first year, my whole financial picture turned around to where I had money saved and I had my bills paid. Now, it takes confession, it takes the word of God, but it also takes good business principles. You've got to manage your money. Come on, somebody here. How are you going to live this blessed life? That's how you do it. All right. So I think we're going to stop right there because um, I think I've given you quite a bit and the hour's getting late. And I want to save some for the next time we're together. Did you get something out of this? All right, praise God. All right, good. Let's stand to our feet, if you will, and um, be encouraged. The best is yet to come. Amen? I believe that. All right. So, glory to God. So, a few things that we learned tonight. Keep good connections. Delight and meditate in God's word. Speak and do God's word. We're going to pick up on that again because you've got to be a doer. Can't be just a hearer or a knower. Some, some people that I've crossed paths, they're know-it-alls. They know it. They can speak it. They know it. But they don't, do not do it. They do not live it. And it's not going to work in your life unless you do it and you live it every day of your life. Come on, somebody. Give me a better amen. All right. All right.